So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and show how a device works. It's been several months in the making. This meter shows all the wires are visible here on top of the desk. So what it shows is a positive lead on the positive battery, a negative, whoops, a negative lead on the negative. I'm going to be putting in a little under one volt from this battery and all the output from the charging coils and the rectifiers will go into this meter. Currently showing zero. We'll be getting an RPM reading on here. And uh, like I said in the last video, this is everything you can buy from Radio Shack at Home Depot. With the exception of the VCR motor I took out of here and put on here. And the top of the motor assembly is actually I have an old CD-ROM I took apart. That's where it came from. That used the old factory CD-ROM magnet and holding. That's all it was. Here again, Radio Shack relays that are cut apart to make the charging coils. And by just spinning them up by hand, just giving them a spin, there's a, there's a little under a volt right there, just giving it a spin, a volt and a half. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and spin up with the battery, break the, break the flux, it takes off, right from a battery, putting in 1.03 volts, and getting out 1.28 volts. I can't call this over unity, but it's not the 400% that I guess I'm supposed to get. But the fact that I'm getting out more power than what I'm putting in should keep this up going indefinitely. So I'm getting ready to switch over to a watch battery, which I'm going to use as a small capacitor. So it should feed the power into the battery and take it back out as it needs to. That's what I'm kind of thinking. If not, I can simply have, if that does not work, I can simply put a charging battery and a run battery and have a switch, on a, a digital switch automatically switch from one to the other, back and forth constantly. So it's running from one and charging the other. Here again, uh, running from one battery, here's the leads on that, just, just around one volt, we're getting out 1.26, let's see, our RPM is 400. 402 RPM. So that's what I'm getting out. At 402 RPMs, we're getting 1.26 volts out. We're putting in 1.01 volts in. Okay, here's what I've done. And there it is. He's self-running, self-charging. I can't call it a neogen because I didn't use neodymium magnets. The fact is, the neodymium magnets pulled themselves down to the coil so, so bad I couldn't use them. So I had to go back to the rare earth magnets. A little bit weaker, far less voltage output, but here she is. Self-running. Go ahead and hang it up here and just let you see it run without knocking something off this time. Oh, oh, let's get the laptop back. Back a little further. There she is. This is probably as far as I'll go with this model here. So I've proved the point. You can make them run, self charge. And there she is. The only thing you can't get out of Radio Shack or Home Depot is this motor, the DC motor. It's a large DC drive motor. I took out of an old VCR. I do have a, a parts manufacturer for that. I supply, you know, belts and pulleys and stuff like that for VCRs. 
That's the only thing you can't make yourself or buy yourself from Radio Shack. <laughs> the next model I make will be well, what I figured out actually was that with this my design right here, when I actually ran the 12 volts through just the motor from the VCR power supply with the neodymium magnet coils, these, the Monster 3.8s, it actually put out 51 volts constant DC power. But you had to put 12 volts into the motor to make it spin because they were so resistant. They pulled themselves down so hard to the coils. That's just kind of a point of interest. Same, same little relay coils from Radio Shack, except for I changed the rotor, and I put out 51 volts. But you'd have to have a charging battery and a run battery, and have them switch back and forth constantly, so you wouldn't overcharge it and blow it up. Anyways, I did it. Here it is. The plans I'll be selling will be basically a template paper printout that you can lay on your material, cut out, follow all the hole patterns, draw them out exactly as I got in the plans, and you can replicate this. Here again, all of the parts are from Radio Shack, Home Depot, except for the DC drive motor. That's out of an old VCR. Okay, here it is. This is the final circuit that I'm going to do on this design. We are putting in 2.15 volts. We're charging the other pack at 2.35 and climbing. I switch back and forth. When one drops down at about 2 volts, I switch over to the other battery pack and charge it right off the other. To do so, I simply do this. We're running on A currently, we're charging B, and we're going to run on B and charge A. And there it is. Now we're running off of 2.18, and we're putting out 2.29. Now what this is, just switching from one pack to the other pack. I need to design a circuit for automatically doing that, but for now it's manual, and I've proved it works. So here is the finished circuit take off the meters. Why does this damn camera keep doing that? Right, the wires are all off. So here is the self-running circuit. And I will eventually design a circuit to switch these automatically instead of having two manual switches down here. All these parts are available from Radio Shack or Home Depot. The CD-ROM itself is actually from a broken, broken CD-ROM I took apart and took off the rotor assembly there. It's on the end of there. And the DC drive motor is actually a VCR motor. I have all the support, all the supplies listed, um, except for the used CD-ROM rotor assembly. There, you can come up with that yourself out of your old CD-ROMs. And everything else can be replicated fairly easy by just laying this template out, mark off every bolt hole, and following the really basic wiring instructions. Nothing complicated here. Rectifiers are all just wired, just like they, just like you're seeing here. I did figure out though, the smaller rectifiers on this coil and this coil produce a lot more power than these larger ones did. 
so I'd probably replace them all with the smaller ones actually. With this circuit and this design, I'm quitting on for now. Go on to a larger, stronger neodymium rotor this time. The same rotor on this motor pumped out 51 volts as opposed to barely holding 3 volts as it is right now. So that's my next one, stronger magnets.